You've seen the unboxing. You've seen the demo of the componentry inside of each of the controllers. You've seen the connectivity on the back of the array, and you've seen the giant QLC 15 terabyte discs. It's in the rack. You've seen all the cabling done. Now it's time to get into the meat and potatoes, folks. Let's go upgrade some firmware, and let's upgrade on tap. All right, as you can hear in the background, that thing is up and running. She's screaming like she's ready to go, and we're going to make her go today. Uh, I have already done a lot of the stuff we're going to go over in this video on the first controller to make sure that everything, all of my software was right, everything worked okay. So I left the second controller completely unupdated. This thing, until I got it, had not been powered on since January of 2021. So we've got some work to do. It's running currently running 9.8 rc1 so we we're up to 9.10.1 at this point we've got a lot of stuff that we've got to update we've got to do the disk firmware uh we don't have to do shelf firmware because this is just a two node system so the shelf is firmware is included with the on tap installation uh it's not standalone like that uh disk firmware disqualification packages to make sure that your drives are supported in your system you want to make sure you do that one and of course on tap now the fun part about this is that we've been making some big advancements lately around what's how to update your systems and with system manager and some of the updates that we're putting in there we actually have a way to do that automatically for you and i'm going to show you guys how a lot of that stuff works here later in the video uh, maybe not in this one, but we've got to get ONTAP upgraded first because that starts becoming available in 9.10.1 and beyond. So for future reference, if you're not seeing some of the stuff that I'm going to show you in System Manager in this or in later videos, check your version of ONTAP. Uh, you may have a version that needs to be updated in order to take advantage of some of those new features. It's always best just to run the latest ver stable release version uh, and the P releases, the P patch releases, uh, because those do contain security fixes, bug fixes, all kinds of stuff. The very first thing we've got to do if we jump over here, though, is we've got to go to the support site. So make sure you have an, an account. If you're brand new to NetApp and you've never had a system before, this might take a little bit of time once you get your system to register the serial numbers, get set up with auto support, all of that. Make sure you do that kind of stuff. And maybe one day I'll make a video of going over that. But let's just assume you've done that part already and you're here to update on tap and you're here to update all of your firmware. The big tab that you want at mysupport.netapp.com is the downloads tab. The quick thing to do is just go under firmware. You can do uh, system firmware and diagnostics. This is going to be your BMC or your service processor firmware. You've got your disk firmware and the matrix, uh, but I'll show you a trick where you don't even have to worry about that. You've got your disk shelf firmware. So if you've got a system that has one or more shelves in addition to the controllers itself, uh, you definitely need to get the shelf firmware. Uh, and if you're running an E-Series system, this is where you get your disk drive firmware for your E-Series platform. But for most of you out there running an AFF or a FAS system, you really just need to get your drive firmware and your shelf firmware. And then, your, of course, your SP, your BMC uh, firmware update for your service processor so that you can remote into the system. All right. The last thing you want to get is on tap, right? So let's go over to downloads and we'll click the O and we'll just click on tap nine. And it's going to ask you here for some verification uh, as we go in. Hopefully it loads up. Yep. Download latest release. Uh, that is certainly one you can do, or you can just go get the base 9.11.1. So I like to go one right before this, uh, considering it's a release candidate. Um, this was literally just released today, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go 9.10.1 P3. The higher the number on the P's is normally meaning that it's been it's gone through a couple of P patch revisions to get those latest service pack updates that are, are going to have those bug fixes and stuff like that. We'll click go here and we choose that we have absolutely read all of this stuff, sign away uh, all that stuff and click accept and continue. And then you now you've got two options. You can choose if you're going to be doing volume encryption, you definitely need this first one. So if you're running production workloads that need additional encrypted disk, encrypted volumes security, uh, you can absolutely get this first one. The second one is the normal 
run-of-the-mill version of ONTAP without volume encryption. We'll grab that one, 9.10.1 P3. It's May 5th as of the filming of this video, just to let you guys know when I'm actually downloading this one. Hopefully 9.11.1 comes out of release candidate soon, and uh, we can go out and grab that one. All right, so I have a uh, set up all of my stuff. I'm going to save that image of ONTAP right there. We'll let that download. It's 2.4 gigabytes in size. Take about 30 seconds to pull that guy down. Let's go back to uh, downloads, right? And we'll go to disk drive and firmware matrix. Now, you might be inundated with all of this listing of every device drive. Don't worry about that. I want you to come up here and just grab this ONTAP all disk firmware bundle. That is the one thing you need. Uh, it, it has all the firmware for all the disks, and you upload it once to the system, and bada-bing. You never have to worry about mixing drives or any of that kind of stuff. Just grab that one. It's a few hundred megabytes. It's not that large. Uh, just grab that download, and you can just upload that one file instead of trying to go through and find all of your individual little disks that you might have spread across different arrays, different shelves, and all of that stuff. One package, and you can just download, upload all of that. There we go. Uh, it's all, so we'll call this uh, all disk firmware. And what was the date on that one? I don't remember seeing the date. So we'll, we'll just call this May 2022. Or 05, uh, let's go 2022 05. There we go. That can be our download. So we'll throw that into downloads. And lastly, we'll go back to downloads. And we need to grab shelf firmware, right? You can do, this is going to depend on what shelf you have and what system you have. I don't have a shelf, so I'm going to leave this one alone, but this is exactly where you update your shelf firmware as well. Again, if you don't have shelves, you don't need the shelf firmware, just as a, uh, as a thing there, so you know. So now we're going to choose our platform, right? We're going to go over, this is for the service processor. This is actually, this is like the BIOS, if you're, if you're used to PC building for your storage array. And it's the, if you've worked with HP servers in the past with ILO, uh, integrated lights out management, any of those kinds of things that might be built into servers and stuff like that, that's, that's kind of what this is. And I'm going to show you guys how that works so you can power on and power off systems remotely via a, uh, SSH. Comes in real handy. So we're going to go to the FAS 500F for my rig here. And we're going to choose the uh, BMC image, image installation from the ONTAP prompt. And the latest version is from April 28th. Again, as of May 5th, the filming of this video. And we're going to grab the download, right? And that's going to spin up. It's going to prompt us again. Make sure you read all the rules, end user agreement, yada, 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 all that stuff. If you're not comfortable doing these things, I'm going to do my best to walk you through it step by step. But absolutely lean on your, uh, your VARs and your resellers to help you do some of this work. They're really seasoned at it. They're really good. I've been doing this kind of stuff for going on 20 years now, so it's almost like blindfolded if I knew how to navigate around the site a little bit better. So there's our BMC. Uh, did I download that one already? Firmware 308, 4099, 15.5. Yeah, I've got that one already, so I'm just going to cancel this download. Like I said, I did the first controller already. What we're going to do today is the second one, right? All right, so now we've got all of our stuff We've got everything we need to do. Now we need to get to the box. Well, how do we do that? Well, you'll see that I'm in an RDP session right here. If you look at the top of the window, I have a jump host that's an older laptop that sits in the rack, and I've got two USB console cables, one going to each controller. So I believe it's COM3 and COM4 in my putty sessions. Uh, I've got them saved right here. So we can uh, load that, and you'll see that I have it on Serial and COM4. And very important, you want your speed to be 115-200 for your baud rate, right? So make sure you have that set. And you'll see I've got COM4 on uh, Node 1. And uh, it, it's how is that also COM4? That's interesting. So we'll see if this actually loads up properly here in a second. Uh, so let's hit Open, right? Enter, Enter. And you'll see we're at the ONTAP prompt. This is node one. It's been fully updated. It, it still needs an ONTAP upgrade, but we'll get to that. I'm saving, saving that one for something special. So we'll open another putty window here, and we'll open the second one and go to open. And that's at the loader prompt. So if you know ONTAP, if you know NetApp, you know the loader prompt. So let me make sure these are all sized up properly. There we go. So node one on the left, node two on the right. Uh, is that big enough for you? Yeah, that's big enough. You guys can see that. So to break things down, we're going to do a sysconfig 
uh, dash a oh we got to do system node run node dcd01 we're going to run the specific command sysconfig slash a right so now we're going to be able to see all the stuff right we can see that i am currently on the 17.7 bios right i'm on the latest 656 loader version right so we are running the latest on node one just to give you guys an update of of what's going on there uh, we have to boot into on tap here. Let's do a boot on tap, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to interrupt the boot and go into the maintenance menu. So we're going to let this thing boot. I'm not speeding this stuff up. I want you guys to see the whole process right there. You can see 9.8 RC1 that this system is currently running. Uh, you can see we're on 1501. I'm going to control C for the boot menu. Make sure that went through. Do it again. And we need to update to 15.5 uh let's see what else have we got uh on tap needs to be updated we need uh i believe the disk firmware probably already got updated um, i'll show you guys how to check on that very easily in system manager here in just a few minutes while that's loading actually i can show you guys uh let me just pull these back out there's a little uh thing i like to use called hfs file server which is basically just a localized http file server so uh, it runs in your tray and when you open it up, it gives you, uh, basically you just drag and drop files into here and it gives you the string, the address that you need. You can just copy it directly to your clipboard. And you can see here yesterday where I was uploading the service processor on node one, just to make sure I got all of that right to be able to show you guys today. I'm a little rusty sometimes, so I have to go back and make sure that, that I, can, uh, I can still do this stuff. <laughs> So now that we're at the boot menu, this gives you options before ever booting on tap into on tap, I should say. It's almost like safe mode if you're used to working in Windows or Linux. It's a way to make changes to the system without affecting the operating system directly. This is where you'll scrub the system completely clean if you need to wipe disks or wipe an array or completely factory reset the configuration of the entire array and any attached shelves of disks. Uh, this is a way that you can configure our advanced drive partitioning, which is something we'll go over in a future video uh, to best take advantage of all of your very large SSDs without any of them really going to waste. Stay tuned for that one. That one's going to be a fun one. I have a lot of people that don't fully understand ADP or advanced drive partitioning. But for this one, we're going to boot straight into ONTAP because I know that there's nothing on it right now. Uh, there's just the old version of ONTAP. It's a completely fresh install, so we're going to let this thing boot up completely because we've got to get to the cluster prompt in order to update the service processor. Once we do that, we don't have to console in anymore over a cable. We can SSH into the system once we assign it an IP address, which we'll do as part of this. Once you have that in there, then you can control D down into a console connection. Pretty slick, right? So... One of the things to note while this is booting up, I'll tell you guys a little bit of a story. At, with the newer systems about five years ago, we started removing uh, rocker switches for the power supplies off of the back of the systems. So you still, without pulling the power cords, how the hell are you supposed to turn the thing off or power cycle it or any of that kind of stuff? If you said remote access or BMC, absolutely. That's how you do it. So that's why it's paramount to get this set up, updated, uh, and configured so that you can have that remote access. Plus, who doesn't want to be able to remote access it into their system without uh, a jump host, without having to have something sitting there with extra cables plugged in, right? You can just come in over Ethernet, over a secure SSH uh, session, and be good to go. All right, so this thing, failover monitor, takeover. Why is it trying to take over? So it's, I think it's still booting up. All right, guys, so now that we're at the login prompt, we're going to log in to the system and be able to do some updating. So admin and my password. All right, now you can see I'm at the cluster prompt. Uh, this is a serial connection. That's why you're seeing that flag. Um, so basically all we wanna do is jump in here and update the system processor. So we can go system uh, service processor, and then we're gonna hit a question mark and we can see all the different things that we can do here. Uh, real quick, uh, since my camera's in the way, I'm going to switch these around, or I'm actually just going to minimize this one 
and pop that guy off to the side there. Actually, you know what? We'll just switch them. That way we're working on node two. You guys can see everything over here. So system service processor is the command uh, that you're going to be using. If you question mark, it will tab out. And then we want to uh, image and we can question again and we want to modify. Let's uh, uh, show. Let's do a show and we can see what's going on. So it's installed. It says it's current on number one. You'll see 15.5, but you'll see 15.1p1 on node two right there. Everybody see that? See how it shows you the two different nodes and how each of them are unique? So you have to do it on both nodes because ONTAP treats them independent of one another for HA and clustering. Oh, thank you, Dell. Nice advertisement on my video. So what we need to do is we need to find system service processor update. This, so this is where you grab your URL from your BMC. We'll copy to clipboard and we'll paste, right click, SP update is not supported. Use the system service processor image update command. That's exactly what I did. Oh, I you know what I bet it I bet it's one of these. Uh you, you probably gotta do that. No, okay. So system <laughs> This is the fun part of administering system, guys. Uh is trying to figure out what the commands are. Reboot SP network log image uh image. Uh is it modify node? And then the node name is node two, and then auto update true. Okay, so that's done now. That's the big thing that we needed to do here. The next part of this is actually a fun thing that I'm gonna show you guys in System Manager. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the uh, System Manager instance for this node, all right? So give me one second. We're going to use the cluster IP address. Uh, since it's all on board, you don't have any software to install. We're going to log in to the system. All right. This is the way I wanted to show you. We're going to take a little detour here because I want to show you guys how to update some of this stuff. So again, cluster overview, on tap update in the top right and it'll scan. You can see that I've already uploaded the image for on tap. That's where I stopped. Uh, on node one because I wanted to show you guys how a lot of that stuff worked, how to do it at the command line, how to do it in system manager, and a cool new feature that's coming very soon starting at 9.10.1. So you can see that the cluster version is currently running on 9.8rc1. You've got two tabs up here. You've got your on tap image and your firmware images, all right? So now that we have this, I can show you guys that node one, what it looks like completely updated. So we have no disqualification package on node two. We have um, the SPC and firmware for uh, node one has been updated. This one has not. So we're gonna click update firmware from local client and we're gonna choose our uh, BMC firmware package that's right here and we're gonna upload that. And it's uploading, right? So copying files, we'll let it update. Now here's the interesting part. Because we went in and we set that auto update flag to true, the next time we reboot the box, you're gonna see it auto update, okay? So let's go back over to our uh, system here and we're just gonna do a, uh, a halt. What this will do is it will take it back to the loader prompt, but what we're looking for is the auto update uh, messages that should happen. Now, theoretically, what we should see is a, is a power down booting back up. You'll see American Megatrends and all of that stuff coming back up. Um, and we should see auto updating of the BMC. Now, again, nothing up my sleeves. All I did was upload a zip file, right? And once it comes back up, we should see this thing update. If not, we've got something to go troubleshoot. Uh, but let's, let's watch this and, and see what happens. Maybe she'll spin up. Maybe she won't. You never know. <laughs> BIOS date 17.1. Let's enter the setup here and we'll run a couple of commands. There's loader. All right, so what we're going to do is boot into ONTAP again. Uh, we will take it back up to the prompt. And the one thing I had to verify really quickly is that now that we have the image uploaded, yes, it should auto update, but we need to be back in at the cluster command prompt in order to see the progress of that update. And then we'll reboot again once the update has happened because it's required to take effect so that it can do the swap of the images. 
All right, so uh, you might see on the right, I got a little console message that this node has taken over for O2. Automatic failover. There is an example of HA happening. I did not even initiate a failover. Uh, ONTAP has gotten so good about just being able to, able to take over access. So later on, when we're configuring our SVMs and our lifts, our logical interfaces, uh, we'll be creating if groups or interface groups to be able to handle those kinds of failovers without any disruption to end users. So whether you have a complete hardware component failure or somebody yanks the power cords out of the back, trips over them, whatever, uh, you just know that this is how the, the HA and the failover works. Uh, you can prohibit that. There's a way to inhibit takeover on when you're first setting up a system. It makes things a little bit easier to deal with. You don't have to deal with a lot of the bureaucracy of takeover and give back and all that stuff. But it is so fast on these newer boxes that it just doesn't even matter at this point, right? So we'll let this thing get boot, booted back up. Um, once we get to the command prompt, the cluster prompt, uh, we're going to basically run that system service processor image command and check update progress, and we should see progress on it. There is a way that if it's not going that we can force it to go. Uh, just know that about every 20 to 30 minutes, there is a process that kicks off, uh, and I think it's manually triggered as part of a reboot to check and auto-update. So hopefully it's not done by the time we get this thing booted back up and we can see the progress of it going through here. All right, so something interesting just happened there. I wanted to bust in on this. You see it says waiting for give back down there at the bottom. Basically, it's saying, hey, partner, I'm back online. Give me back control of my system, please. And this will take anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds to happen. Uh, there's just a little intercluster communication happening between the two of them. They're making sure, hey, you okay? You okay? You okay? Yeah, good. Okay, okay. you can you can drive again. It's more of a checks and balances process that makes sure that all of this is good and that the users can begin sharing the load across across both controllers at this point. So normally this goes very quickly. All right, so that's not going well. It's it's waiting for give back. So if we do uh, node uh, system give back, is that? I feel like it's uh, node give back. Oh man, you're gonna make me look up commands, aren't you? Yeah, give back. No of node DCD O2 and continuing boot and there we go. So quick little command. Um, I normally that happens automatically in the past when I've done it, but it's interesting that I had to go in and actually. I'm wondering if there was something else that I did. Maybe we updated the firmware. There was a delta difference there. That's something I'm going to have to investigate myself. But hey, that's how simple it was. I went to the other node, give back of node node name, done, and it just takes off and it's off to the races. So now it's, it's continuing the boot over on node two. So once we get back to the command prompt here in about 30 seconds, we'll be able to check that progress of the service processor update. And there we go, back at the login prompt. All right, so we'll get logged back in. We'll, did I, I foobarred that, I believe. Fat fingers, fat fingers. Of course, I'm going to change my admin account once we get this thing up and running. Okay, system, service, service, processor, image, update, progress. So, not done. So, what I can do, I believe, is can we go? Nope, I need to back out a little bit. Image, update. Firmware, we need to reboot the SP on completion. Yes. There we go. So I'm forcing it now, right? That's the one way you kick it off is you tell it to update the node. We've updated it already, what we did through System Manager, and now we're kicking it off. Normally that kicks off automatically for some reason. Uh, it, it didn't. I don't know. It's one of those things, right? Uh, so now we can do uh, update progress, and you'll get like a little uh, show. And you'll get like a little table. You'll see 5% done, right? Start time gives you all that. This is all going to the logs. So if anybody updates this stuff, it's captured as part of the log dump. So you can see whenever this, this happens, right? This process, I'm going to fast forward and pause to the point where this is done. But this process can take about mm, 10 minutes, roughly. Uh, once it's done, we're going to reboot the node. And then I'll show you guys how to get how to SSH into the IP address, or we got to configure it first, right? That's the very first thing we got to do. So we'll do that as soon as this is done. I wanted to jump in here because you might hear your fans go nuts at about 60%. 
So it's rebooting the service processor right now, which controls all of the fans and all of the sensors and all of that stuff. So we can double check. We're at about 60% right now, and you can hear that thing screaming. So I'm going to come back when it's done. All right, all done, 100%. And you can see that it started at 22 minutes and it ended at 27 minutes. So a little less than five minutes start to finish to update that. Um, now we've got to do some actual configuration work. So let's go in. We're going to use the same kind of batch system sets. And we're going to go into system, service processor, uh, network. And we're going to do our question mark, and we can take a look at the commands that are there for that. You've got auto configuration if you're using DHCP or you have a something along those lines. Uh, we're going to use modify. We can, sh we can do show currently, and we can show what's in there. Uh, it's got the gateway in there already, but is it? it doesn't have... No, it doesn't have an IP address yet. It must be picking up the gateway from the other one. So uh, let me space down. Yeah, it's it's got a bad one in there right now. Whatever this one is, is not accurate. So we're going to queue to quit, and we're going to go service processor network modify. And I'll do a question mark there so you can see the commands. So we're going to specify the node. This is the node 2, right? And then we're going to go through the address family. Now, let me, let me just emphasize, it is important to do every single one of these parameters, okay? Otherwise, it'll throw an error at you. You want to make sure that you go through and do it. Uh, you want to enable the interface, so we'll do enable true. Um, the next one is DHCP none. We're not going to do DHCP, right? We're going to do IP dash address, and I'm going to give it, oh man, I need my spreadsheet. I think it's 232. 132, 16, 10, 232. We'll, we'll run with that one for now. Uh, actually, I'll be right back. Let me double check that. I was wrong. I'm glad I double checked. It's actually 236. 232 is the node IP for management. Uh, so basically, the, the, the way that I've got this broken down, one of the first things you should do is open up a spreadsheet or notepad or something where you can keep a record of this because you need a main cluster IP address. You need a management IP address for each node. That's your node IPs. Then you need a service processor IP for each node. And then you're going to need your data IPs for data lifts and things like that. That, that can be hundreds of IPs uh, ultimately. So make sure you at least scope out those first five to 10 IPs for your base system management. For me, node one's BMC is 235. Node two is 236. All right. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have hit that yet. 236, and then we got to do net mask, and we're going to put our subnet mask in there, right? That's zero, and then prefix link we don't have to worry about, and then gateway, 172.16.10.1. All right. Boom. Update, and there she goes. All right. Now, that IP address, that 10.236, huh, what could we do with that? Let's go over here and open an SSH session. We're going to go to 172.16.10.236. What? Same credentials as your cluster. Your admin, admin credentials. Uh, and your password. And look at that. Look at that. I apologize for the tiny font. Hopefully you guys can see it there. But... This is where things get real fun. So now you've got system and you've got BMC. So if we do system question mark, what? Oh, come on. System, I believe it's system power. So basically you can do system power on, power off. And it, you'll see it shut down the system. So in the event that you halt the node and you get it back to the loader prompt where it's sitting idle waiting to boot into on, to on tap, you can certainly come in here as well and shut it down. So that this is almost this is remote management. If you've if you've managed servers and you've managed storage arrays, this is a godsend. This is one of those things that is it will save your butt. You're you're out at dinner and you can SSH from a mobile device or from a laptop into your system. Just make sure your uh, security's intact with your network engineers, storage admins. Make sure you uh, have worked with your network engineers to make sure that you have access to this from the outside if you want it. You don't have to have that. It's up to you, really. At the end of the day, you can also remote into the uh, a jump host the exact same way. But 
This has come in really handy several times for me over the years. All right, that's BMC. That's your service processor update. We're going to do this one more time just so that I can show you guys that it has updated and that we can see that as part of the process. So uh, hang tight. Let's go through the motions here just so you can double check and make sure that everything gets updated once you've pushed the software into there. Well, it's always fun when you have an internet outage right in the middle of trying to make one of these videos. So it, who knows what's going to happen. I know this is a longer video than I usually make, but this is the kind of stuff I wanted to get back into with you guys. So where were we? We were updating the BMC service processor. And as you can see on the left here, we have rebooted the node. It's actually up to the last uh, to the latest version. And the last thing we need to do is use FSS or sorry, sorry HFS to update. <coughs> excuse me our um i can remove this one remove yep and then there's my dqp we'll remove that one yep and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to downloads and we're going to find our service image 177 that's what we're looking for so we're going to grab that and chuck that over into our hfs and then we're going to run some new commands so if you've never done this before it's system node firmware download so we're going to download the zip file from my http server and then we're going to tell it we're going to boot back to the loader prompt and we're going to run a command called update flash and it'll automatically detect all of that so node uh, dcd huh oh this is one of those lessons you have to learn you have to do set privileged advanced so that's uh advanced there you go. And now we can do system node firmware download node. <laughs> Every now and then you run into that damn system uh, set privilege advance and it just it catches you off guard and it's frustrating. Um, what is the flag? Image package. And then you just paste in your thing there. Download started. You can see it's getting pulled from my HTTP client over here, or server, I should say. And update can flash at the firmware prompt. So here we go again. We'll do an exit, right? And then we'll do halt, node, DCD, two. Yes. The other one will take over, yada, yada, yada. We'll get back to the loader prompt. We'll run one co one more command, and then we are done updating firmware. The last thing I want to show you while this guy is rebooting is I want to jump back over to System Manager and show you where you can update stuff. So when you want to update firmware, you can do it from a web server or an FTP server, or you can just do it if you've got it saved on your laptop or your jump host or whatever you might be on. You can browse to it. So <clears throat> whether this is the shelf firmware or the disk firmware or even the on tap image that's how you upload it the easiest way uh, if you don't have access to uh, a browser hey we're getting fans this time sweet let's make sure we don't miss that so that i can uh catch it yep just a little little blip that time all right um, so I, you'll see I've got on here my all disk firmware with the date stamp on it of today uh, we've got our that's our on tap image uh, 9101 p3 we upload that through system manager as well plus some other trick ways that I'll show you guys in the future but let's get back to our console the the shelf firmware and the disk firmware and the disk qualification package as soon as you upload them it will non disruptively just go disk by disk and start updating them and you'll see the progress happen right here on the screen under disk firmware and DQP you can see I've already got those in there though so Let's jump back over here. All right, we're back at the loader prompt. We're going to run, uh, if you do a question mark here, you'll see the commands. They don't really display them elegantly, but right here is the one we're looking for. Update flash. So what we should see, did it post the message? Yes. Okay, so the boot media contains a newer firmware image. That's what we wanted to see. Please run update flash at the loader prompt to update your system firmware. So we're going to do that, and it's going to go off, and it's going to do its thing. This is like updating the BIOS on your motherboard at home. It's that's that's real, except you don't need a thumb drive and it's going to put all kinds of crazy symbols on the screen. We're going to speed this up so you don't have to sit here and watch this and we'll be back as soon as it's done. See, this is why I did this on the first one to make sure that it all ran properly so that I could show you guys on the second one. Can you imagine doing this twice? Good times. 
and we're done it's backing up and we're almost done guys we're almost at the home stretch this is the home stretch we are almost there we're almost ready to upgrade on tap so while this is finishing up i want to go over what we did in this video just recap we, uh, I showed you how to update, to grab all of the software off of the NetApp support site. Make sure you've got your account and your auto support and everything set up there first before you try and do this. Probably too late now if you're this far along in the video. Uh, also, make sure you download your all disk firmware package in the top. Forget the whole list. Grab the all disk one. Simplify your life. You won't ever have to bother with it. Make sure you grab your shelf firmware if you have additional disk trays, disk shelves uh, going along with it. Uh, because as soon as you hook that up, the all disk firmware will pick up and update all of your disks there as well. All of that happens auto magically, no manual intervention required. Just it'll find it. It'll do it itself. And you can keep track of it either in the logs or just in system manager, an overall total progress. It'll show you the number of disks that are left that need updating, and it'll show you the progress in a percentage going across. Lastly, uh, we updated the BMC service processor and we configured it for network and I showed you guys how you can SSH directly into it, execute system power offs and ons without having to have a console cable on a jump host. It is going to save your behind one day, I promise you. Make sure you configure that. Don't skip out on it. Write down your IPs, know how to get access to it. And frankly, I would just use that to administer the system rather than the console connection because the more you remember that that service processor is there the less chance you have of forgetting that it exists in the first place and it has it's that bailout for you from an administration standpoint once it saves your backside you'll never forget it so be aware of that one and lastly we upgraded the core bios of the system overall the core componentry so we're on this great path, guys. I hope you're enjoying the journey. We've unboxed the system. We've uh, gone over all of the internals. We have, um, we've cabled the entire thing up. I showed you guys what interfaces were what and what options you have available in the previous video. And now we've gone through and we've updated all of the core software of the system. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to do big on tap upgrades. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, I saved a little Easter egg nugget for you for last. So the big part about all of this stuff, um, it needs six seconds. It's a finishing the update. Cool. So there you get an idea of how long that took. Um, the big little Easter egg that I'm telling you, something we've been working on for a long time now, is how, from a consumer standpoint, auto-updating auto has taken the world by storm. We've wanted to bring the same thing to NetApp for a long time. And I'm happy to announce that as of 9.10.1, you can now configure auto-updating in System Manager. And one of the things I'm going to show you in the next video, so make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications on, is that after we do the on-tap update to 9.10.1p3, I'm going to go into System Manager and show you how to configure the auto-updating for all of your firmware, all of your disks, all of your shelf firmware, your BIOS and your SP, all of that stuff is going to be able to be auto-updated for you. You'll be able to check, uh, set a schedule for when that runs, all of it. So I will show you guys how to do that in the next video where we upgrade on tap, where it becomes available. So guys, there we go. We're back at the loader prompt, are we? No, it's booting back up. It'll be booting back up for a few minutes, but I think that's all I wanted to show you today. We updated the BIOS to 17.7. We upgraded the SP, the service processor, to 15.5. We updated the shelf firmware, which I don't really have a shelf, so whatever. But it's good to have on the system anyway. By the way, you can upload the shelf firmware to the system proactively so that in the event or when you need to expand, not if, when you need to expand into more disks, it'll already be there and it'll update as soon as you uh, put that up there. But as of 9, 10, 1 and beyond, that's that's not going to be an issue for you anymore. So be aware of that. Um, and lastly, we what did we do? We did the BIOS. We did the B, uh, BMC, the service processor. We configured the networking for that. Uh, we updated the shelf firmware and the disk firmware. So big, long video, I know. For those of you that are new to NetApp, I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope this made setting up your brand new toy uh, very fun. I have a blast doing this kind of stuff. I know I've been doing a lot of cloud stuff for the last few years, but I'm a hardware geek. I love this stuff. Who else do you know that puts data center racks in their studio in their house? Like, come on, right? I, the whole part of this journey is to take you end to end completely in the NetApp ecosystem. I've got a brand new box 
that came out of the box. We unboxed it. We're going to update everything. We're going to configure some workloads on it. I'm going to put about 50 terabytes of actual data, my actual data, on this. We're going to connect it to the cloud. We're going to mirror to FSX. We're going to stand some stuff up in Azure. We're going to move some stuff or stand some complimentary edge stuff up in Google Cloud. All kinds of stuff. So welcome to the journey. The storage array says hi. And I say thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care.